So what's Thanksgiving going to be like for you this year? Are we going to have freezing temperatures from coast to coast, significant heat across the country, severe weather, or could we see some big snowstorms? We're going to get into the details. It's November 13th, 2025. Let's get into your potential Thanksgiving forecast. We're going to start off simple. Let's look at what NOAA thinks the temperatures could be like around Thanksgiving. This is their three to four week outlook, and you can see it's from November 22nd to December 5th. Notice we're not just expected to be cool on one side of the country and warm on the other. We're really expected to be below average from coast to coast, and the southern plains and southeast could be slightly above average. Precipitation-wise, NOAA expects it to be pretty active as well, except for a slither of the southeast, as you can see there. One thing we have to consider when putting together our Thanksgiving forecast is the SSW, or Sudden Stratospheric Warming Event, we're seeing up in the Arctic. Here's a look at our GFS model, and you can see these very warm anomalies up in the stratosphere beginning to grow as we push through the end of November. Taking a look at our 10 millibar height anomalies on the Euro, it sees something very similar. This is on track to be the earliest and most significant sudden stratospheric warming event in recorded history. Many times you don't see these SSWs until we're closer to peak winter, although this is happening in fall as we're approaching Thanksgiving. And as I've said in my previous videos, when you have these sudden stratospheric warming events, it greatly disrupts the polar vortex, displacing a lot of the coldest air on the planet to the mid-latitudes. Our MJO forecast, or Madden-Julian oscillation forecast, is also extremely important when trying to determine Is it going to be hot or cold around Thanksgiving? Could we be in an active storm pattern or could it be pretty dry? There's pretty good model consensus that we'll be in a phase seven MJO as we approach and move through Thanksgiving. Here's what the temperature anomalies are on average during a phase seven MJO in the month of November. Notice it's typically cooler for the Pacific Northwest, Northern Rockies, the Plains, up through the Midwest Ohio Valley and inner New England while we're typically a little bit warmer below that line. Although this phase seven shift is projected to happen at the end of November. And look at what our phase seven looks like in December. It's actually colder down to the Southeast and up and down the mid-Atlantic and New England coast. Overall, this is suggesting that we could see average to below average temperatures across much of the country, except for through portions of the Southwest and extreme Southeast. And by the way, if you're wondering, what does all this mean? Is it going to be hot or cold? Is it going to be wet or dry? Don't worry. This stuff's important. We're getting there. What we're looking at right here is our European extended ensemble. And this really stretches out through the end of December. This right here is our Arctic oscillation. And if you want it cold in the States, you want it negative. If you want it warm in the States, you probably want this to be positive. Well, notice the trend here. It's pretty negative moving forward, except for a brief period here around Thanksgiving, which is interesting because now we have the MJO suggesting below average temperatures for much of the States, but the Arctic Oscillation is saying not so fast. Our tropospheric polar vortex is going to be a little bit farther to the North, and it's not going to allow that cold air down into the States. So our MJO says cold. Our Arctic Oscillation suggests average to warm. Let's take a look at our EPO. This is our Eastern Pacific Oscillation. Look at this dip as we approach Thanksgiving. This is significant. A negative EPO represents a large ridge or high pressure building up over Alaska. That can tilt our polar jet down into the States and typically brings more cold air into the central and eastern US. So now we have those two strong signals of the MJO and EPO, and then the AO really not being very positive, but more neutral. I wanted to take a look at our GFS extended ensemble teleconnection as well. Here's the EPO, and it does suggest a dip, a negative EPO, as we move into Thanksgiving. The last thing we're going to look at here is our European weeklies. This is our 500 millibar height anomaly. Here's as we move forward in time and approach Thanksgiving. We notice some higher heights out east and some cooler troughing out to the west. As we move through Thanksgiving, that cold air transfers out east, and December looks cold, but I've been talking about that in all my previous videos. December looks very cold. It looks like we could have a white Christmas for a lot of people in the plains and out east. If you're interested in the December forecast, I'll have a link to that at the end of my video. But the point is, I do agree with the European here. I think the cold air is going to be on its way for Thanksgiving. Does that cold air and winter storm pattern arrive a day or two before Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, or a day or two after it's going to be close. The real pattern change, the pattern flip that we're looking at is projected to happen basically on or right around Thanksgiving time, making my job of forecasting this Thanksgiving a little bit more difficult. But here's my forecast. Right around Thanksgiving, I do expect some good troughing to be moving into the plains, and I suspect we're going to have the chance for a big snowstorm somewhere across the plains or through the Midwest. I actually think we may see slightly above average temperatures out east on Thanksgiving, but in the following few days after Thanksgiving, I do think the cold air and stormy pattern will be transferring out to the eastern seaboard. I do believe the west will be slightly below average on Thanksgiving, but we'll be transitioning into a warmer stretch right after Thanksgiving to kick off December. So if you're looking for the chance for a cold and snowy Thanksgiving, I think the central U.S. is your best bet. And if you're looking for a more mild Thanksgiving, the eastern seaboard down through the central plains right now, I think favors that heat. Even though we're expecting this potential major polar vortex breakdown, 
I don't think that cold air is really going to take over the states until around the second or third week of December. And that's because there typically is a two to three week lagging event with the stratospheric polar vortex. So while I agree with below average temperatures in the states around Thanksgiving time, I don't think that's going to be triggered from our sudden stratospheric warming event. And by the way, if you're looking forward to going skiing out west for Thanksgiving, we could have a lot of snow piling up out in the Rockies over the next six to 10 days. Before I wrap up this video, I do want to go over our forecast over the next two weeks. As we move into this weekend, we're going to see our polar jet diving once again down into the northern upper Midwest and out towards New England, bringing a lot of low elevation, cold rain, and high elevation snow. This weekend, we will also see some warm temperatures returning to the plains. Friday and Saturday, the central to southern plains are actually expected to see record high temperatures. As we get towards the end of the weekend and into next week, we're going to see a lot of moisture beginning to plunge into the West, really storm after storm after storm, piling up a lot of snow in the high elevations and bringing a lot of rain to the lower elevations. We may also see early next week, Monday or Tuesday, a shortwave trough trying to eject out East, bringing a little bit of snow potentially to the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic. I think it's going to be a sprinkle, maybe a dusting with potentially some more storminess down there through the Southeast and Tennessee Valley. Pushing into the middle and end of next week, this is where things get interesting. We have a decent low pressure moving up through the plains. This could actually trigger some severe weather out here through Dixie Alley, and we have some cold air sticking back into the northern plains. Could we get a snowstorm up here for Omaha, Des Moines, Minneapolis? Potentially, although I think that snow may be a little bit farther to the north. And then getting out towards the end of the model run, this is where things start to look pretty aggressive. We're seeing kind of storm after storm, and that polar jet really trying to collapse a little bit farther down to the states and set up multiple severe weather events. If one thing's for sure, the second half of November looks very active. A lot of storm systems, above average precipitation. I agree with Noah on that. And with this polar jet beginning to collapse down to the south, I do think we could say the second half of November, colder temperatures from coast to coast, at least in the northern half of the U.S., is possible. Taking a look at where our global model sees snow falling before Thanksgiving, this is the European model. Now, the snow out in the Rockies, this is likely happening over the next six to ten days. This northern plains and upper Midwest storm, this could be closer to the Thanksgiving time. And I do think there's potential that it's actually a little bit farther to the south. You also see some decent snowfall up here through inner New England. The GFS also likes that rocky snow and inner New England snow, although it does give a chance here for some snowfall from eastern Kansas up through Wisconsin and even tries to put snow in the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle. Lastly, check out our European AI snowfall forecast through the next two weeks. It thinks we could get some snow out into Connecticut, maybe even approaching Philly and New York City. We'll have to see about that. It puts a lot of snow out here through portions of the plains. I'm talking about southwestern Nebraska, western Kansas, and then look at eastern in Colorado here. It also gives us the opportunity for snow in the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest as well. Again, I'm really watching this region here. I do think we could get a surprising snowstorm through this area right before Thanksgiving or as we move through Thanksgiving time. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I make posts like this every single morning and after I post, I live stream for an hour or two to answer all of your weather related questions. I also have a link to my Discord down in the description if you want to become a member of the Climate Crew. The Discord's a great place to hang out out, meet other weather enthusiasts, and get live and up-to-date weather information every single day. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video or in the live stream right after I post this.